It's actually a good thing that I decided to video how to set up these tables because I had an error in the table that when I went to look at how I would explain it, <laughs> the error was very glaring. Anywho, hopefully everything's been fixed now. This is using congruency as a bit of a shortcut when finding the full surface area of triangular prism. The congruency here is that you're always going to have that your front and back triangles, or your bottom and top triangles, depending on how it's positioned, but your two triangular bases are always going to be congruent to each other. So when you have just the one row filled in instead of the two rows, you need two times the half times base times height in my previous version. I forgot the two, even though I remember to double the area over there. Sorry. Oh, you didn't see it. Never mind. Not sorry. Uh, so half times base is 12 centimeters. Height is 5 centimeters. And I have two of them. So these cancel each other out. And then I just have 12 times 5 is 60. The blue rectangle is the slanted one over here. That is 13 centimeters in this direction and 8 centimeters in this direction because it's the same as down here, 8 centimeters. Uh, on the visual, it's 13 centimeters here by 8 centimeters, and you see that measurement over here. And then the red, and that's the one that you're probably going to forget if you're not given the net. The bottom, you cannot see the bottom here. It's 12 centimeters by 8 centimeters. You just need to make sure you're keeping in mind what are all the faces that I have for these different shapes to make sure you don't forget anything. So 12 by 8 is right here. And that's 96 centimeters squared. And the last one is over here, 5 by 8, the side that stands straight up here, 8 by 5. And that's 40 centimeters squared when you multiply your 5 times your 8. Then you have to add, make sure you add all of them up and get 300 centimeters squared for the total surface area of the whole triangular prism. 